This presentation will review Principal Component Analysis, or PCA, which is a technique commonly employed in research for identifying patterns. Biology is complicated, made up of trillions of different data points. Let's take twins as an example. They have so many attributes that are the same or similar to each other. Their DNA, their height, their eye color, etc. But which attributes are different? For these twins, we'd probably use glassware and clothes. But what if the differences weren't so obvious? How do we determine which attributes make these twins different? That is why methods like PCA were developed. PCA takes something complicated and simplifies it so that patterns can be identified. It can identify attributes that are different that aren't obvious. It does this by determining which attributes are the most different between all samples. By focusing more on these highly different attributes and essentially discarding the other attributes, high dimensional data are simplified into lower dimensional data. If we consider the twin example again, PCA takes high dimensional data, like comparing two humans, and identifies attributes that make them different. In this case, one twin is infected with a virus while the other is not. By focusing only on the attributes that are different, one twin can be easily discerned from the other. Thus, PCA simplifies higher dimensional data into lower dimensional data. Because PCA only considers attributes that are different across all samples, rather than between groups, PCA is considered an unsupervised method. Let's imagine that we want to know whether a person's blood pressure, age, and or daily caloric intake affects whether they will get diabetes. We collect these data from 20 patients. The unique combination of data points from each patient is represented as a black dot. The location of this dot can be described in a three-dimensional space defined by an XYZ coordinate, where the X-axis represents blood pressure, the Y-axis represents age, and the Z-axis represents caloric intake. PCA applies different weights to each attribute after analyzing all samples. By doing this, the coordinate of each patient is no longer in the standard XYZ space, but in a principal component space. Here, blood pressure is weighted the least, while caloric intake is weighted the most. Then, the sample similarity or dissimilarity can be determined using the new principal component or PC coordinates. PCA generates different PCs, with each PC weighting the attributes differently. Here, blood pressure is now weighted the most while age is weighted the least. It is important to point out that each PC is independent of one another. The total number of PCs that are generated is determined by the lowest number of samples or attributes that are being analyzed. Let's look at some examples. If you have 10 samples and 40 attributes, how many principal components would be made? Right, 10. There would be 10 principal components since 10 samples is a lower number than 40 attributes. If you have 100 samples and 40 attributes, how many principal components would be made? Right again, 40. This time the number of attributes determines how many principal components there will be since the number of attributes is lower than the number of samples. Each principal component, or PC, has a different combination of weights on the attributes. By convention, the first PC, or PC1, will have a weight combination that results in the largest spread or variation of data points. PC2 will have a weight combination that results in the second largest spread of data points, and so on. Because of this, PCA data are commonly represented by a plot of PC1 versus PC2 which will result in the greatest spread of data that will better enable pattern recognition. The following are examples of PC plots, PC1 versus PC2, and PC3 versus PC4. As you can see, the PC1 versus PC2 plot results in the largest spread of data, while the PC3 versus PC4 plot has less data variability. Let's apply PCA to an imaginary study. We have a set of 22 patients who are either healthy or have cancer. We want to draw their blood so that we can identify cancer biomarkers, or molecules in the blood called proteins, that can distinguish cancer patients from healthy patients. We're going to do this by measuring the different proteins in the blood. The first step is to collect the data. We know four of these patients have cancer. The rest are healthy. The next step is to pre-process the data. 
Although not required, this step is highly recommended to make the data more comparable across attributes. Pre-processing ensures that the data sets have the same mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. In this example, each patient would represent a data set, where each spot would represent a unique protein and its level in the blood. Here I show the centering of data sets from two patients, one and two, so that they have the same mean. Then the data sets are scaled so that they also have the same standard deviation. The third step is the automatic calculation performed by an algorithm to generate the PCs. The fourth step is to plot PC1 versus PC2. Here we see that the cancer patients are clustered toward the lower left of the plot. This is one of the reasons why PCA is so popular. Group similarity or dissimilarity can be easily and visually discerned by a PCA plot. Now that we know that there are some proteins that cause the cancer group to cluster separately from the healthy group, the next question is, which proteins or attributes were weighted the most to get these results? In the final step, we find out which attributes were weighted the most by looking at a generated table or a rotation plot. In other words, we find out which attributes were identified by the PCA analysis to cause the largest spread in data. In this example, six proteins in the blood were weighted the most and enabled cancer patients to be distinguished from healthy controls. These proteins would be considered cancer biomarkers. Follow-up analyses may then be performed to validate such results. To summarize, PCA is used to identify which underlying attributes are the most different across all samples. It can also help to cluster or stratify samples into groups. Finally, sometimes by seeing which attributes are weighted the most within a principal component, a biological association may be inferred. Of course, follow-up studies would be required to confirm such associations. Biostatisticians love PCA for two reasons. One, group similarity and dissimilarity can be easily and visually discerned using a PCA plot. Second, PCA identifies attributes or biomarkers that may not be intuitive which can help provide valuable insight into basic biology. For more information on the biostatistical analysis services offered by Ray Biotech, please go to www.raybiotech.com or email us at info at raybiotech.com. For more information on other common biostatistical methods used in research, check out the links provided below.